All right. Esper aggro for day two of the arena open. All right. We are on the play. We have turn two Angel of Unity buffing Sigardian of Angel. <sighs> it's not great, but this is definitely not a mulligan. Our mana doesn't give us a second black source for the Shuldred. All right. Well, second black source for the Shuldred, but no turn three play as of yet. Turn three, one Sigardian of Angel is not going to be exciting. Black Red, probably playing against Rakdos. Yes. Game one against Rakdos isn't easy. In fact, it's kind of not good, but Elspeth is the big card against them. Do I have any incentive to play out this Sigardian Evangel? Or do I wait? If I wait, I'm waiting until basically turn six. If I play it out, I get to take one less damage from the Voldaren Epicure here. I think I play this out. I actually care about the Sigardian Evangel representing damage to my opponent if they don't manage to find exactly Oni Colt Anvil here to get a stream of chump blockers. And I think since my next two turns are spoken for anyway, it's very likely that I'm going to find more things to do with my mana over the next couple of turns. All right, we love them exiling Fable. We do not mind them using a Voltage Surge on a Sigardian Evangel. Another Angel of Unity, that's fine. This pause could be the blood token, could be a voltage surge. Well, it's definitely the blood token, but they could have a voltage surge. Wow, that's incredibly good for me. That implies they don't have Infernal Grasp in hand, and it costs them a ton of resources to activate the blood token. Leaving them with no artifacts in play. Also makes it harder for them to use the Blood Death Harvester to kill the Shieldred. Not that much harder, apparently, but slightly hard. All right, you love to see it. So I could play Elspeth here, but I don't really have a meaningful uptick. Upticking on Shieldred just still leaves it dying to the Blood Token. I can gain five life by doing that, but I think I'd rather just play Lazel before Elspeth, run the risk of them finding a Duress and removing the most important card from me. Is that fine? Could also Elspeth and Downtick. Little risky if they end up having a voltage surge, though. Think we're just gonna play Lazel and discard Angel of Unity. Hypothetically, I guess I should be attacking before doing this. I wonder if I even want to attack with the Shieldred. Trades with a blood token and a voltage surge if we attack. Well, 
well, full, Blood Token, Voltage Surge, and Epicure. Aha, uh -huh. so they did have the Voltage Surge. You didn't sack anything to that Voltage Surge opponent, so I'm just going to decline. Okay, well, now that they've used the Voltage Surge, I can attack. Works for me. Another Blood Fountain, which gives them the blood necessary to kill children. Yep. Uh, I think they don't know how Lazel works, because their Voltage Surge earlier did not remove the ability for it to blink, because I chose not to blink, because Lazel's powerful like that for some reason. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that's... Them not finding an Infernal Grasp or any Oni Cult Anvils was not their deck firing on all cylinders. So let's see here. We want all four temporary lockdowns. We don't want Viconia or Tenacious Underdog. We would prefer Valorous Stance to Fateful Absence. We don't really need Sigardine of Angels. They don't do that much when we're bringing in temporary lockdown anyway. We want Elspeth, number three. So I've toyed with removing Anointed Peacekeepers on the draw, although I think that's probably wrong. Cutdown's the card that I'm, like, most interested in cutting. I want to bring in, like, one Urtai. Maybe two. Having answers for opposing Shieldreds and imposing, er, opposing Invoke Despairs is pretty important. Not that Urtai is a good answer to opposing Invoke Despairs, but it's better than nothing. And cut down, well, on the draw, cut down's a little more valuable. Hitting Blood Tithe Harvester isn't really a very big deal. It sometimes is, but the big relevant thing with cut down is hitting Fable of the Mirror Breaker either half of it. That said, we're leaning on four temporary lockdowns, so I think I bring in one Urtai. I think that's the plan. All right, we get turn to... Well, maybe we don't even turn to Angel of Unity because we have the temporary lockdown. Either way, we keep the hand. Angel of Unity is a really, really powerful card in this matchup because it comes with flying and lifelink and makes your other flying lifelinkers huge. But it does admittedly have some pretty weird non-synergy with temporary lockdown. Lazel looks great. Yeah. All right. Well, at this point, I think I'm just going to play temporary lockdown on three because I don't want to go Angel of Unity, Diviner of Fates, into the Blood Tithe Harvester with multiple pieces of blood on board. So, we're just not going to play the Angel of Unity, and then we're going to temporary lock down on three. Sure, Sanguine Brushstroke doesn't do much against temporary lockdown. Boink, boink, boink. Board is gone. Another Sanguine Brush Stroke. Does mean any blood they sacrifice from here on out is going to be a little painful since the temporary lockdown didn't get rid of the original Sanguine Brush Stroke. Ah. <sighs> Pretty sure it just has to be Clement into Angel of Unity to develop the large life linker. Uh, 
a little uncertain here whether I would rather buff the Anointed Peacekeeper to cast next turn or Lazel. And I know that sounds weird, but Anointed Peacekeeper can shut off Invoke Despair, which is the thing that might beat me here. So I think that's actually pretty liable to be what I want to play next. And if I play it next, we get two turns worth of lands to hit to give us an Elspeth. Yeah, Shieldred's annoying. In that case, I believe what I want to do is play Anointed Peacekeeper and Specialize Clement. And then we can play Anointed Peace... Or then we can give Lifelink to Anointed Peacekeeper next turn. What I could also do is play and Specialize Lazel. I think I still need to play Anointed Peacekeeper this turn, though. It's a 5-5, which means that it gets to survive, or, well, not survive, but trade with Shieldred, which is also fine with me. Let's see. I think I would very much like to deny them Oni Colt Anvil right now. Do I want to specialize Clement, and if so, for what color? I believe the answer is yes, and I think it's for blue. I don't think I need to specialize for black while we have Anointed Peacekeeper. Okay... What do any of these mean to me? Well, I mean, I'm definitely taking the second Elspeth because nothing else is really... useful. Drain two with the brush stroke. Not even drain anymore, it's just damage, huh? My life loss. Blood Death Harvester. Okay. And another two damage with the brush strokes. Yeah. No good attack for them. Fine by me. We get to play Elspeth, give lifelink to the Peacekeeper, which probably forces the trade with the Shieldred anyway. On the off chance they don't take it, I probably shouldn't swing with the Clement, because I don't want to give them that free block. Do we play out the land? Yes, because I have no benefit to holding the land. Unless they play Liliana, in which case I've got an extra Elspeth to discard anyway. I just don't think that's going to happen. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, that's fine. Angel of Unity continues to give us an incredible amount of life over time. Oh, do we give lifelink to Clement? Do I downtick Elspeth post-combat? Actually. Downticking Elspeth could hit temporary lockdown, which is strong, but not necessarily needed right now. If I uptick pre-combat on Clement... Force the trade with two of those things. Probably ought to do that. Just gain life. It's a good plan. Ah. 
Then we lose some life. Yup, Rooney. That's acceptable. Play Lazel. Lazel extremely large. I think I don't want to just throw away this Elspeth in case they have Invoke Despair. I think Invoke Despair on this turn is the only thing that I'm actually afraid of. Especially because they get the lockdown back. Okay, well, they don't have Invoke Despair, so we win. Radical! A good start. Record updated to one and oh. We will take the play. Ugh. No real two drop, and we can't even cast the Shieldred on curve. I could keep this and then just plan to play Diviner of Fates on three as my first play. I can't mulligan this, but this isn't a good keep. Between Tower and Crossroads, I would probably rather play Crossroads on one. There's the chance this scries into a good two-drop? Yeah, okay. Well, we were going to find that naturally, but, you know. This does mean if I want to play Angel into Diviner that we don't get Shouldered on three, I'm probably fine with that. I don't like seeing Crossroads for blue. That implies we're playing the mirror. And I'm hoping it's the aggro mirror and not... Yeah, that's a bad sign. Viconia means we're probably playing against control, which I do not love to do. But Diviner of Fates probably going to wind up discarding a land here. I don't want to discard a land. Okay, I'll discard an Elspeth. I want my stats on Diviner of Fates to be able to go over the Viconia. But getting an untapped land off of Rafine's Tower would be a pretty big deal. Obscura Charm. Okay. That's a magic card. More Shieldreds. Yeah. Mm. That's a bad sign. Mostly it's bad because I can't do anything this turn. Probably just have to play this Sigardine Evangel. I don't actually want to cycle Rafine's Tower. This is not a matchup where this Angel of Unity is doing a ton of work. So... If they have a white card in hand, they can put a Diviner of Fates into play off Iconia if they want to. They can exile mine with Viconia and then specialize into white, or they can just play their own Diviner of Fates. I think that was worse. Well, maybe not. Maybe they want to save the ability to do something with Viconia. Cut downs the Angel of Unity. That's fine. Wasn't super impactful anyway. I could play Elspeth and uptick on the Evangel to give flying. Interesting. Probably wrong.
probably better to play the Shieldred. Especially with the duplicate Shieldred. Yeah, kind of just assuming this trades off with the Viconia. I don't mind getting a Viconia off the board. There goes Shieldred. They don't have the discard outlet for Diviner of Fates because we killed the Viconia. That's a lot of three mana removal. I want to play Elspeth and Downtick. I'm a little scared about how bad that is if it whiffs, though. It's not likely to whiff. Does not whiff. Good stuff. Rafine's not the best hit, though, because they can safely attack with Diviner of Fates at the Elspeth, and I'm forced to block, which loses us the shield counter. But Rafine's still stronger than Clement. Yeah, Lazel's painful. What do you have? Not another Diviner of Fates, please. No. Okay. I get Rafine back then. No, they. What? Why? Weird. Oh, cool. They didn't get rid of the shield counter on Rafine. Not for any particular reason, but cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's go with Vigilance on Rafine then. Not particularly helpful. I'm wondering if maybe I should have given First Strike to Shieldred, but I feel like Vigilance on Rafine is better. So with the Viconia, they plan to get another Diviner of Fates, I'm assuming. Which is fine with me, because I can Fateful Absence the Viconia in response to the Specialize. Which, unfortunately, triggers the Diviner of Fates another time. Am I okay trading off the Shieldred for a Lazel here? Keeps the Elspeth in play, which gives lifelink to the Rafine. I kind of think that I'm not okay trading off the Shieldred in that position. I think Shieldred has a really good chance of just representing enough damage to be lethal. Okay. They can spend all the mana they want setting up a Specialize on Viconia for blue. So they get a land with Diviner of Fates. Another Diviner of Fates. Okay. 
That does damage them with the Shieldred. So now I am left wondering if I would be willing to trade off the Shieldred. How much damage? They're doing nine damage on the back swing, but I'm gaining four life plus another two. That's fine. So I think I'm willing to swing with the Shieldred. I want to cycle this first. Because I actually need to discard a real card to this. in order to make the Shieldred not trade with the two Diviner of Fates. Uh, yeah, okay, I need to discard the Evangel. It's fine, I can get it back with the Takanuma anyway now. I really, really want them to be taking damage when they draw cards here. So we are mostly immune to Thoughtseize effects, which isn't really relevant. Sarah Paragon. Okay, interesting. But nothing that gains them life. The Paragon blocks the Rafine, though. Well, not really, because I'm about to get back the ability to tap down their entire board if they tap out. Somehow this Rafine still has a shield counter, which is a little surprising to me. It's weird that I didn't really think we had a good curve. Well, I guess we went turn three. No, turn four was the turn that was awkward for us, that we couldn't do anything except play a Cigar Need of Angel. But Angel of Unity and Diviner of Fates was at least decent. So, it wasn't as awkward an opening as I kind of remembered it being before our first draw step, but still a little surprised we're winning this. When Spermin is put into a graveyard, exile it, and you gain two life. Okay. That's fine. So I can't actually tap down the Lazel. So I'm hoping they attack with it. They don't. Rude. I could get back the Elspeth. Probably worse. Currently I'm tapping down three things. Rafine, Paragon, Diviner, Swinging, putting two counters somewhere. I probably want to put counters on the Shieldred so that I eat the Lazel. That sounds very good to me. Oh, but I only need to do four damage. As long as the last card in their hand isn't a removal spell for Shieldred. And if it was, they probably would have played it. Angel of Unity is perfect. Okay. Yeah, that should be lethal. Not from their perspective. I actually did need to draw a non-land with one of these three draws. But I think the pl Oh, no, 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 no. That wasn't... Huh, yeah, they super weren't dead. Because I can't actually let them block Shieldred, and I have to attack with Shieldred in order to get two counters on Rafine to put them to two. So what I actually had to do was Sigardian Evangel, tap down the three creatures, attack with both, put the two counters, or, well, one counter from the final copy of Sigardian Evangel in our hand onto Shieldred, force the chump block put them to four, then they draw going to two. And we hope they don't draw into an answer to Shieldred. All right, so what are we playing against? A Sarah Paragon version of Esper with a lot of instants. So it's not really control, it's more mid-range. Which makes me want to keep the cutdowns. Probably keep Viconia. <sighs> the tricky part about these mirrors is they always tend to have... Uh... Well, you know what? I'm actually not... 
I am a little concerned. Um, Tasha is a problem because of the uptick for this deck. Underdog and Viconia are pretty important. What am I allowed to cut here? Elspeth's pretty underwhelming. Not the most underwhelming. Depending on how many copies of Shouldered they have. I mean, I definitely want the other Valorous stance. I'm quite certain of that. I think I don't really want Elspeth. I believe I want Urtai. I'm probably supposed to want the other Urtai. I don't know how large to expect them to be. I can't really cut cut down. I need Viconia. I think I just have to live with only one Urtai, even if I would prefer a second. We have Angel of Unity choosing whether it buffs Tenacious Underdog or Lazel. We'll probably choose to buff Lazel. Which is a little risky if they actually have counter spells. Opponent Mulligan, that's a good start for us. Rafim's Tower. That probably at best discards to Lazel. I don't really want to play it. All right, no counter spell. There wasn't any pause there. Sounds good for Lazel. Opponent has a Diviner of Fates. That's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Discards a land to it. This too is fine. On the off chance they get aggressive. I think I want to take one less damage from my lands here by playing the crossroads. Would I rather have double black or double white? I cut my Elspeth, so I don't have a lot of use for double white. So double black it is. So Guardian of Angel, definitely don't dislike that. I guess Tenacious Underdog is probably the thing that I most want to ship away right now. All right, Angel of Unity in the skies, gaining us some life. Love to see it. Posing Rafine. Swings with Diviner of Fates. Discards something to put a counter on Diviner of Fates. Understandable. Means we get to play Lazel. Safely. They boarded in in a gate. Fascinating. Alright, I dig Plaza of Heroes. Do I want to gain more life or split up my power and toughness? I believe I would like to make Rafine out of cut down range where possible. And then we'll play Lazel this turn. And that's a chunky Lazel. How are you answering this one, opponent? This is still a part of the game where them playing Tasha would be pretty annoying. Reading my graveyard, I feel like that implies they have a Viconia in hand. A Lazel, okay. Either that or they were looking at my Lazel options if I discard something black. I can actually get back that Peacekeeper. That's interesting. So I can't tap down the Lazel or kill the Lazel with the Evangel. 
I'm probably going to Valorous Stance the Rafine. But... Let's see what they're working with first. Ah, there's a lot of Diviner of Fates and a really annoying Tasha. Huh. I think the Tasha is actually more important for us to get rid of. Do I get rid of the Rafine now? They can just get it back with Obscura Charm. I think I need to buff Lazel so they can't just block with their Lazel. Do I want to make this land drop? I don't think so. Pretty close to just forcing this block anyway. That's six. I don't think I need to make this seven. Technically, this isn't lethal right now. I guess it is if I kill the Rafine right now, but... Oh, wow, they blocked with the Lazel. Okay. Sure. Sure, I mean, that leaves them in deep chump block territory. So we get to tap down two things with Sigardine Evangel, and I get to Fateful Absence a blocker here. The best blocker I can remove would probably be Rafine. But I kind of like the idea of Fateful Absencing the Diviner of Fates that's larger. It's less mana efficient. But I can only remove three blockers, and they're going to have three blockers. And I'd rather deny them the additional card draw here. Alright, so... We force them to chump with one thing. If we play out the Sigardian of Angels. They take... 7 plus up to 4 damage is 11, so we don't have a lethal here. If I Valorous Stance the Rafine, that doesn't accomplish anything other than putting one less Sigardine of Angel in play. Although it kills one more creature. I kind of feel like Rafine matters a lot less than Diviner of Fates, so I should make them kill their largest Diviner of Fates. This gives us another buffed Lazel to work with. I don't need to save Peacekeeper because they're already forced to block the Lazel, but do I want a Peacekeeper on the ground that's larger? Or do I want a larger Flyer that also happens to have lifelink? Let's go with the larger Flyer. Because 
if they have a Tasha in hand, they don't. They discarded Tasha. They discarded Tasha to Diviner of Fates earlier then, which means they put another Planeswalker in hand, which is probably another Tasha. Basically, I don't want to grow the Peacekeeper because there's... A, I mean, my board's too wide for this to matter, but they could use a removal spell on the Peacekeeper and then play Tasha. And with the Peacekeeper down, Tasha goes from being a 8-mana spell to a 4-mana spell. But that said, I just don't see how they get out of this, especially with me drawing a counter spell. <laughs> All right. Uh, got there. Record 2-0. and I think playing against those Esper mid-range decks is a lot easier than playing against the Esper control decks, especially when their removal package like that is all three drops, and it's so much harder for them to recover tempo. The Esper control lists tend to play more Tasha and more one and two mana removal spells so they can keep pace with you, but those mid-range decks rely on their removal spells being flexible and to just have big, hard-to-kill creatures. But we can handle big, hard-to-kill creatures better than we can handle removal because we have bigger creatures that are also exactly as hard to kill. <sighs> what to make of this? We get turn two Viconia, which just isn't that great, and then also don't have a three drop, but our mana's fine. I think there's a very good chance I should mulligan this, but I'm going to keep it off the basis of getting a scry with the Forsaken Crossroads. Well, Rafine's Tower is annoying. I can't, I have to play that out so that I can play the Shouldered on Curve. I guess I still could have played the Crossroads on one and then played the Rafine's Tower on two currently. Hmm. Still, this is a pretty awful start against Red Black. We have none of our cards that are useful in this matchup other than Shouldered. We're not curving out well. We're not even doing, like, the thing where we put strong creatures into play. The best I can hope is that they're just going to have a turn four Shieldred. This is going badly. If they have a turn four Shieldred, at least I get to Valorous Stance in. Attack with Viconia for two damage or hold it back to prevent one. Definitely don't need another fateful absence. I think we hold it back to prevent one. <laughs> All right, well, I need my opponent to have no removal, and I need to draw an Elspeth really quick to have any chance here. Oh, boy. Well, that helps protect the Shieldred. If we manage to untap with a Shieldred. If we don't manage to untap with a Shieldred, there's not a lot of hope. I guess I can always get back <coughs> Shieldred with Viconia. Nope, that's pretty bad. Uh, I'm going to take way too much damage. Way faster than I can handle. Even though I can get back the Shieldred, it's just not relevant enough. I 
Maybe if they keep missing land drops, uh, maybe I don't take Hyper Lethal before I can replay the Shieldred. Love having all these lands and no capacity to actually discard them to the Viconia, given that's what I actually want to do. Down to nine. <sighs> All right, they didn't have a removal spell for the Viconia. That's almost something, but I'm still like dead before any of this matters. Down to eight. Down to six. No, I'm I'm just dead. I'm just dead. Alright. Elspeth. Lockdowns. Cutdowns out. Viconia underdog out. Faithful absence out. Valorous stance in. So Guardian of Angels out. What am I missing? Definitely Urtai, but I thought I was only doing one Urtai. <sighs> Did I bring in two Urtais? Was that what it was? Did I bring in Phyrexian Missionary? That doesn't seem right. I could definitely bring in a Thalia. It's not my favorite with Temporary Lockdown to be playing two drops that aren't, like, mission critical like Clement and Angel of Unity. And it doesn't play well with Elspeth. This is weird. Maybe I did keep the Fateful Absence? Maybe that's what it was? To have one more answer to Shieldred? Or maybe it was that I brought in two Urtais? Huh. I feel like I'm somehow going crazy, but okay. We will take the play. We'll mulligan for a hand that's more playable. Hand of all two drops, no mana, and temporary lockdown in a five drop, huh? We have one draw step. I think I have to keep this and ship the Elspeth. If we get an untapped land, this is pretty strong. I don't even need to use the temporary lockdown. Okay. We have a game. I'm okay trading off Clements and then playing the Clements, but if I keep committing too many non... If I commit Angel of Unity to the board, I'm basically saying that I don't want a temporary lockdown. And I probably do want a temporary lockdown.
Okay, well, do I want a temporary lockdown right this turn? Probably, because I gotta start deploying my two drops as fast as I can. And I think doing nothing is probably bad. Yeah, especially since they didn't trade off with the Clement. We're taking so much damage from our mana base. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right, untap land. No, just a diviner of fates. Dare I play the Angel of Unity? I think I need to get the Angel of Unity slightly larger than this, so it's out of Voltage Surge range. But I need to land so badly. I have Voltage Surge, by the looks of it. Deciding not to use it on Clement. I think every point of damage except for two thus far has been, well, three now. It's been from my own mana. Ugh. I don't hate them sitting around doing nothing. That could be worse. Come on, opponent, you want to Voltage Surge my Clement. And then I want to draw an untapped land so I can go Clement Angel. More blood. Yep, there we go. Oh, and it's a blue source too. No trade, opponent? No trade? Okay. How are we doing this? I don't think I have time to do anything other than just play Double Angel. Do I want to buff the other Clement to try to play it and specialize into white? Or do I actually think I have enough time to do Diviner of Fades things? I think I go with trying to have enough time to do Diviner of Fates things. Because I think making a lifelink in Clement at the moment is just slightly too likely to... get uh, invalidated by Oni Colt Anvil. Okay. Angel of Unity shrunk enough for them to Voltage Surge. Would have thought they would have wanted to kill the larger Angel of Unity. Must not matter because they also have an Infernal Grasp. Yeah, that's... that's the ball game. That's the perfect everything. If I make Clement a life linker this turn, and force them to sacrifice this artifact, I think my out is them not drawing another artifact to trigger Oni Colt Anvil.
Gotta take what gambles we can get. Okay. That's still pretty horrible. Down to three. They can sack the treasure to nothing. No, they get to sack the treasure for something. To play sack dead. Wow. We would be winning this game if I uh, hadn't lost like nine, ten life to my own lands. Painful. Instead, we dead. <laughs> Instead, we're super dead. Ugh, fine. All right. Can't believe they managed to kill both angels. Ugh. All right, angel on two, angel on three, no second thing to buff, but that's what drawing into cards is for. Playing against red-black again on the draw, not stellar, but two angel of unities is very good. Two Shieldred's also not bad. Would prefer to draw a third Angel of Unity so I have something else to buff here with my multiple Angel of Unity triggers. We are not looking at perfect draws today. Do I want Diviner of Fates? No, I don't. I think I do. Maybe I do. Next turn is Shieldred, so I'm looking for something to do on turn five. I get two draw steps towards that. The minor fates is pretty slow, but it also digs me one deeper. No, I, I should probably keep it. Opponent's starting to maximize the amount of damage they're dealing. Mm. Has plenty of damage. Plenty, plenty, plenty of damage.
and we hope they don't have removal for children. Taking two damage with every Oni Cult. They didn't have it in hand, or they didn't know whether they wanted to use it, or they didn't set an upkeep stop. I guess Diviner of Fates potentially gaining two life is a pretty good reason to have kept it on top. Was thinking that I wanted to dig towards Rafine or Elspeth, but nah, Diviner of Fates is pretty reasonable. Position here is pretty fine if they can't remove Shieldred. <sighs> I think they missed a land drop last turn as well. Now let's see. If I block an artifact, they just sacrifice the artifact. So blocking the Epicure is mostly free. Unless they have a Voltage Surge... But if they have a Voltage Surge that costs their red mana for the turn... It means that they're not Voltage Surging the Angel of Unity when I've got a duplicate Shieldred anyway. So they should let damage happen and then Voltage Surge post-combat. That way they get the one point of damage from the uh, artifact actually hitting me. But given that they missed a land drop, I really value denying them the red source on this turn. So I think not gaining two life, well, not getting four life, because I'm not going to get to draw off of this Shieldred. Oh, okay. It's just a deadly dispute. That's plenty easy. Okay. Well, losing the Angel of Unity is a problem. Drawing the Valorous Stance is pretty good, though. Don't want them to know about Plaza of Heroes if I don't have to. Oh, but maybe I should have considered that I might discard the land to Diviner. No. Discarding this land to Diviner. Alright. Gaining life, gaining life, gaining life. There's no point at all in attacking with the Shieldred. I'm still in a lot of trouble here. Wow, they don't do a bunch of damage to me. That's kind of surprising. Okay. Still, I'm taking a relatively huge amount of damage. Not comfortable with this. Have to top deck something to save me. Maybe I should have discarded the second Shouldred to be able to block with Diviner of Fates, given that I've got Valorous Stance to protect Shouldred anyway. Maybe discarding this land was actually a pretty significant error. Huh. Especially because that has a chance to find Peacekeeper to name Onicult Anvil would be huge, and also Rafine would be huge in this position. Yeah, that was a mistake.
So down to 13 and down to 11 off the Unicult activation. Okay, they want a Voltage Surge, my Shieldred. That means I get use out of the Valorous Stance. What? Wow, this is just leaves the battlefield? I thought this said if you sacrifice an artifact specifically. Wow, this card's dumb. So blinking stuff triggers Oni Colt Anvil? What? Oh yeah. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Well, cut down to kill Blood Artist helps. Oh, Forsaken Crossroads is why I was wrong to play the Shipwreck Marsh last turn. Now I don't get to scry this turn while protecting my Shieldred. I have to choose to do one or the other. Clever. All right, let's cut down here, see if they activate any Cold Anvils in response. They don't. That's good. Is Angel of Unity doing more if I block? I don't believe so. Opponent just choosing to never activate Oni Colt Anvil is buying me a lot of time. For whatever reason. But I am pretty close to dead. I don't even know. I need Rafine. That's it. It's like the only card that saves me. Sigurdine Evangel. Do you do anything? No. Well, I mean, it gives me a lot of blockers, at least. And triggers Diviner of Fates. That bit's nice. Chance that finds her fiend. I think a lot of this comes back to the very potentially game losing mistake of not discarding the Shieldred to Diviner of Fates. Oh shoot, I have to play a life for this last Sigardian Evangel? Is that worth it? It's probably worth it. I mean, it's preventing point of damage by a construct anyway. Ah, uh, Peacekeeper would have been useful earlier. Down to seven. Down to five. Down to very, 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 very dead. All right. Doot, 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 doot. 
doot. Doodly doodly doot. 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 All right. Let's give it a shot. No more bad hands, please. Take the play. This looks familiar. No. I think we lead on Forsaken Crossroads. Get the immediate scry. Do I want Valorous Stance? I think trying to fish for a creature to buff with Angel of Unity is better. Okay. Yeah, that is better. Blood Fountain holding up a voltage surge for Angel of Unity. Could be worse. I wonder if there's a world in which... No, I think, it, given that I don't want them to Voltage Surge the Rafine, I think I'm supposed to force them to Voltage Surge that pre-combat. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, it's annoying. Angel of Unity, huh? I do like Angel of Unity. I think I swing first. Temporary lockdown. I like that a lot. So does that mean I get rid of the Angel of Unity? No, I don't think putting counters on Rafine matters very much. I think the plan is we temporary lockdown next turn. I'd also rather this Diviner of Fates be big enough to block the Goblin Shaman, if possible. Lazel. Well, now. That does mean that I get rid of the Angel of Unity. Another Rafine, not as great, but we can discard that to Lazel. So my big fear at this point is that I am extremely soft to Shieldred. especially having put one of my limited answers on the bottom of the deck. The hope is the opponent just plays like two unequal anvils and I get to win this game. The fact that they're debating whether they want to untap this land or not means probably no Shieldred. Blood Death Harvester is fine. We get to exile that. You want to play a one drop two opponent? No, don't Voltage Surge my Diviner of Fates. That'd be rude. Debating whether they want to sack the Blood Token or the Blood Fountain. Yeah, rude. So, could play Lazel this turn. Force the opponent to play out a bit more stuff before we lock down. Better use of our mana. Blocks well enough.
Okay, Ravine's Tower discards just as well as Rafine the actual, so... Get a small buff on Rafine. Play Lazel. Crossroads for what color? Our mana's pretty much fine no matter what we do. Definitely don't want the Crossroads. Okay. I will decline. This is a lot of players we're playing against today who don't know how Lazel works. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Yeah, well. Unfortunately for the opponent, that's not how Lazel works. So, we still get to fizzle it. <laughs> oh dear. I'm sorry, opponent. Let's see. I believe we want to do this for black. Get back Diviner of Fates. Diviner of Fates away the Clement. Do I play Lockdown just to remove a Goblin Shaman and a Blood Fountain? Currently... They can kill Lazel unless I put counters on it. I think I just don't need to temporary lockdown here. As long as I'm willing to put a counter on Lazel. The swamp doesn't do much for me. Because I don't want to specialize the second Lazel into black also anyway. The Iganjo also probably doesn't do a lot for me, but might as well keep it just in case. All right. Well, the will isn't very scary here. one has got two things that don't die to lockdown, however. Fable. Sure. Alright. Do we lock down now at this point just to force better chump blocks for me? I think so. Okay, cool. Whee! On the draw. Do we want the second Thalia? I still hate playing Thalia with temporary lockdown. <sighs> no. I gotta say, it is very weird how much the temporary lockdown and Angel of Unity plans are kind of at crossroads. I've had a number of games just get won by Angel of Unities, but I've also had positions where I had to sequence my plays very oddly because I didn't want to develop a large Angel of Unity and then play Lockdown. Mm, okay. Play one Thalia and then just have the Thalia show up in the opener. That works.
if my opponent is just going to be able to kill Thalia with Blood Tithe Harvester anyway, I think I'd rather play this Clement, which, by the way, is a fantastic top deck. The Blood Tithe Harvester, the Clement. All right. I'm more than happy about that. They Fable. I think I wish to anointed peacekeeper here. Oh boy. That's a lot of cards that do things, huh? I think I would rather deny them the ability to play the Blood Tithe Harvester, who kills the anointed peacekeeper next turn than to deny them the ability to play the Onicult Anvil that doesn't do a huge amount. Okay, they get rid of Blood Death Harvester. I'm fine with that. Kind of hoping they don't find the land to play Shieldred this turn because I don't want to play off Curve Valorous dancing the Shieldred. But if they're willing to sack the 2-2, two, two, they probably just want to play the Shieldred. But if, if they're playing the Shieldred by sacking the 2-2 two, two and the Treasure, then I don't mind so much playing off curve. Boink. Draw an untap land, play Thalia? No, or tie. Mm, okay, the land situation is becoming a little concerning. Two Oni Colts. Very well. Not my favorite. Okay, is it my favorite if we tax the two Oni Colts? The thing is that getting the Rafine... No, we gotta play the Rafine. Getting the Rafine draws us towards more lands, and then is also good once we have the Shieldred in play. Can't play the Anointed Peacekeeper given that. Jeez. Would really like to draw a land. Opponent decides not to do a damage to me and gain a life. I'm happy with that. If I was going to lose a Peacekeeper or a Rafine, I guess I would rather lose the Peacekeeper, because I want to hit the land, assuming they have Voltage Surge here, if they do. Sweet! Delicious, delicious lands. Uh, okay, that's inconvenient. I mean, they are out of cards now. So that's something. Do I just pitch two creatures to go as aggro as possible? Or am I just supposed to assume that aggro doesn't matter? They have a lot of mana. So peacekeepering Oni Cold Anvil isn't, like, the most necessary thing in the world.
I think I just want to play Diviner Fates plus Thalia next turn. Oh, shoot. I should have gotten rid of the Ravine's Tower. Oh, right, right, right. I, I, I lost track of things there and for some reason thought that I had already, or had not already played a land. Molten Impact, sure. And that Infernal Grasp was extremely well-timed. I shouldn't have done this before swinging with the Rafine. Am I swinging with the Rafine? Yes, I need to. Am I playing this Thalia for additional blockers? No, I'm specializing the Clement. Yes, I'm specializing the Clement. And I'm probably specializing into blue. Looking for either a Elspeth or a Lockdown. Okay, failing that, Shieldred's viable. All right, opponent, how are your top deck's doing? Have more shielded answers? Doesn't look like it. Happy to throw away as many lands as it takes. Does this matter? Not really which two lands I choose to throw away. All right, life gain, life gain, life gain. All right, let's hope they don't find Will to steal the Shieldred. Land, final card is... Okay. Okay. Do I play Diviner of Fates pre-combat? Does that have any effect on anything? Uh, I don't know what they could have, but I think I want to hold up Plaza of Heroes more than I want to do something with Diviner of Fates. <laughs> okay. Well, so much for the plan, draw enough lands to kill them. No, I couldn't, because they can only cult Anvil on their upkeep. Still gaining eight life and <laughs> thinning my deck of eight lands is welcome. Back up to 21, a healthy spot to be.
Play Diviner of Fates. Gain to life. Ooh, temporary lockdown. That means we get to get a temporary lockdown. Ooh, a temporary lockdown. That means I get to get a temporary lockdown. Yeah. We'll get another random creature instead of another random temporary lockdown. Okay, opponent. At this point, I think even if they draw a will, it's not good enough. Molden Impact. Kills a creature. Very well. Oni Colt Anvil. Does some damage to stuff. Puts us to 21. Puts them to not technically dead to Rafine. We gain some life. We play a temporary lockdown. Most of the board state goes away. We lose our Thalia. That bit's sad. Whew! All right. Three and one. All right, on the draw with Angel of Unity into Anointed Peacekeeper, that's pretty reasonable. We get to see the opponent's first land before I decide whether or not I think I want to hold up cut down on turn one. I probably do not want to hold up cut down on turn one. Ooh. All right. Clement into Angel of Unity plus cut down, or Clement into Anointed Peacekeeper. Both are pretty reasonable. Might prefer to go for Angel of Unity just to make the Anointed Peacekeeper a 5-5, five, five. but then again, maybe that just doesn't matter. If they offer the trade with the Blood Tithe Harvester, I would take it. Now, cut downing the Blood Artist is also pretty appealing. But that lets them kill the Angel of Unity with the Blood Tithe Harvester, which I'm not about. No. Okay. Cut down on the Blood Tithe Harvester it is. Play Angel of Unity. Buff the Peacekeeper. Alright. We got a decent source of life gain going. Opponent wants to spend their time removing Angel of Unity. That's not the worst for me because it means they're not developing the board. Sanguine Brushstroke is representing a lot of damage. Okay. But they don't have an easy way to sack the blood tokens at the moment. Oh. Alright, new plan. Fiend is probably better than Anointed Peacekeeper since it starts to buff the Angel of Unity. Do I think that's true? They were on the play, so the crossroads was tapped. I think I would rather play the Anointed Peacekeeper than the Rafine, so that I can specifically shut down a potential Shieldred. Yikes. Well, the Voltage Surge makes me wish I had played the Rafine. I'm kind of horrified of what happens if they play this Sanguine Brushstroke. 
and then start pinging me for three with every blood they sacrifice. I'd also like to make the voltage surge too expensive to play. I still think it's Sanguine Brushstroke, though. Saiganjo so could end up being useful, but I think not having to pay life to play Rafine and Diviner of Fates is a better deal. I'm kind of expecting to see them Electrostatic, the Clement, and then Voltage Surge, the Angel of Unity. Blood Tithe Harvester kills whatever they want next turn. Okay. So, no Voltage Surge available this turn. But they can Blood Tithe Harvester the Angel of Unity after we buff it. And then Voltage Surge the Rafine. Still mostly like the idea of... Maybe I'm supposed to play the Diviner of Fates this turn and not the Rafine? Incentivize them to Blood Tithe Harvester, the Anointed Peacekeeper. But then they still volt. They still Rafine. They still Voltage Surge the Angel of Unity in that case. So I think I would rather them not be able to play the Sanguine Brush Stroke. <sighs> sure. Alright, well. Successfully accomplished neither thing. I guess this doesn't really change anything other than I gain a little less life. Kept the swamps, we could potentially discard it to Lazel. I, I guess the most important part of this is that they can't, in this situation, Blood Tithe Harvester the Anointed Peacekeeper. I mean, I guess they could. They Harvester the Peacekeeper and then they Volted Surge the Rafine because we didn't buff the Angel of Unity. It not being three power isn't as scary. And then they can also play the Brush Stroke this turn and then just, like, 15 me next turn. It's pretty scary. They kill the Rafine rather than the Peacekeeper. Oh, right, they also had to pay for the Rafine, so without a land drop, they couldn't have played the Brushstroke by killing the Peacekeeper. In well, no, 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 no. This was only in the world where I actually did play the Rafine. <laughs> sure. Okay. Then we Volted Surge kill the Angel of Unity, presumably. Which I guess means the Diviner Fates doesn't get killed. That's something. Discards Epicure. Curious. Yep, two more damage. When may they play this until? End of this turn. Perfect. Love to see it. Hate to see it. Hate to see the land. All right, let's top deck Elspeth and win the game. Uh, 
<sighs> we were one card away. Is this still not good enough? This still costs five mana to play. This sacks of blood swings with that. Maybe you shouldn't have swung with that? I guess it probably doesn't matter. Ah, oh, yeah, there's the brush stroke. So the blood tokens now deal three damage. I need them to activate. Oh, I shouldn't have discarded the Elspeth because now they know that I have the Elspeth, so they know not to activate the Oni. Cool, Denville. Okay. I mean, I'm still in a troublesome predicament either way, right? Oh, no, they had it anyway, because I went to seven, and they can sack Oni Cold Anvil to itself. Yep. So even without the top deck, we were still dead on board. Oh, more than dead on board, right, because sacking the blood tokens also triggers the Oni Cold... So, overkill by three. <sighs> Still uncertain on the Thalia. Still uncertain there. If they're heavy into brush strokes, maybe it's just more valuable. I think I value every other two drop more. And I think I'd prefer the one to one split on our Tyan Thalia over two of either. Can't believe we were one card away on the Elspeth. One card <laughs> deeper than we would have gotten there. What a shame. Hey, you know what? Given that they drew the second Oni Colt Anvil, maybe that wasn't even the case. Maybe that was enough of an engine with three. Blood Tithe Harvesters, or, no, uh, Blood, Blood Artists, <laughs> that blood one. Take the play, keep, ah, uh, we're happy about Clement into Peacekeeper on the play. Do I value Takanuma or Swamp more? That's kind of an interesting... Conundrum with Specialize. I think we play Caves for now, so I don't have to think about that choice. Totally fine with them killing Peacekeeper, or killing Clement if they want to. A little low on things to do. 
and that's part of why we like the swamp in case we need to specialize the Clement, although there's a good chance they're going to kill Clement here. Sure. What do we got? Sanguine Brushstroke and Fable. Will. Of those, I'm assuming I would much rather them... Ah, oh, man, I hate that Will is going to steal this Peacekeeper. There's almost a decent chance I'm supposed to name the Will. But I'm a coward, so Mirror Breaker it is, and then we just hope to top deck a four drop that's relevant. Yeah, this forces them to play Brushstroke, which isn't that good for them. Oh, there's a magic card. I think we play the Swamp to avoid taking damage here. And immediately draw the one card that, like, hyper punishes that. I don't like giving them the knowledge that I have an Elspeth by discarding the Elspeth, but I also really want this Diviner of Fates to have slightly higher stats so that when I give it lifelink with Elspeth, it can actually trade with Will, hypothetically. And Anoint Peacekeeper chunks in for damage. That's nice. Should I uptick Elspeth and give lifelink to the Diviner of Fates? Run the risk that one of their cards is Voltage Surge. They know I have the Elspeth. Drawing the Urtai is cool, but... Hmm... If I play the Elspeth, and they remove the target, things look pretty bad for me. And by remove the, t it's bad. I kind of think I might be better off just not playing anything and passing with Urtai up in this position. Yeah, this is exactly what would have made Elspeth bad. Do I hold the land to pretend that I didn't have the capacity to play Elspeth? No, I don't think that's right. I'm hoping that they still just go for Will anyway. and potentially not playing the land to try to give them more confidence that I just missed the land drop and couldn't play the Elspeth is better. Yeah, they don't go for it. This was kind of the fear. If they just sat around and played to the board rather than tapping out, my Urtai is not very good. And I run the risk of not being able to do anything useful this turn. I could Takanuma back Diviner of Fates, play Lazel, discard Diviner of Fates. But 
then we're back to the where we were with them being able to will my peacekeeper and that not being a good position for me. Okay, we're going to counter that. No interest in letting the opponent have Shieldred. Ravine's Tower is a pretty interesting draw. So if I play Elspeth and give Urtai flying, it forces a chump block. And they can't just play Will. Because regardless of which of my two creatures they steal, they're dead. The alternative is play Lazel, get back to Viner of Fates, go really wide. Hmm. They wouldn't be able to steal Lazel with Will. Ah, uh, this is a tough spot. I'm actually not sure at all which of these is correct. Okay, trading off Urtai with Blood Tithe Harvester? Probably? Yes, because otherwise they can just make the same sacrifice on their turn if they want to. Alright, so the benefit of this route is that we now threaten to Elspeth give Lazel flying for a bunch of damage in the air. And Lazel's high enough CMC that they can't steal it with Will. Yep, Will steals Peacekeeper, presumably. I don't know for one mana how they stop this Lazel. They just have to hope I have something that isn't Lazel, I guess. Removal spell on Diviner of Fates puts their life total to seven, still not enough. What you got for me, opponent? All right, we have the game where I get to be on the draw. Does anything change on the draw? We've dem they've demonstrated having Shieldred. Will isn't, I mean, I get, Urtai is not. Amazing, but not bad either. I don't think I changed to a fourth or tie. That's a little too much top end. I do still want to be able to play something on two. I just don't want a bunch of twos with the temporary lockdown game plan. Ugh, what is this on the draw? Can I keep this? Can I mulligan this? Oh, this is so bad. I think I have to keep... This is banking really hard on Elspeth's downtick eventually finding a lockdown. But I'm, like, in so much trouble if they just play Fable of the Mirror Breaker.
They're having to debate it too. They keep. I will also keep. Do I play Crossroads to scry? Have a better chance of hitting a two drop, but if I do hit a two drop, I play Igonjo, Crossroads, and then I can't play Shouldered on four anyway. I think I just play the tower and don't try to scry into a two drop and just hope I draw the two drop naturally. Extract the truth. They probably get rid of Diviner of Fates to deny me a three drop, but then I get to crossroads towards a three drop. So that's something. Oof, that's a lot of crossroads. Black, probably. Scry. Lockdown. I do probably want Lockdown eventually, even though I don't want to Lockdown now. Don't play Fable? Yeah. I don't think it's worth Lockdowning a single... I do want the Valorous Stance to kill opposing Shieldreds. I don't think it's worth using the Lockdown to kill a single 2-2. Two -two. I can save it and get more impact out of it later. Okay, Tony Colt I can handle. Second Tony Colt, please. Deadly Dispute, nah, not second Tony Colt. Inconvenient. Hopefully no easy removal spell for them. I will not be blocking out of respect for Voltage Surge. Please just play a bunch of owning Colt Anvils this turn. Will stealing Shieldred would be annoying, but not the end of the world because I can Valorous Stance the Will. So they don't have a sack outlet for the Shieldred. Not attacking with the 2-2 two -two is interesting. That kind of implies they don't have Voltage Surge. I could take one less damage here. I don't think I'm willing to risk it, even though I think they probably would have attacked with the 2-2 two -two if they had Voltage Surge. There's Shieldred. I can live with that. Yeah, I think I'm just supposed to lock down here so I can actually attack with Shieldred. Alright, now things get scary. Whoa. That's a good sign.
can get back Blood Tithe Harvester for next turn, sure. Which will kill the Shildred if I don't answer it. Upticking Elspeth doesn't accomplish very much. Would like to hit a temporary lockdown off of this Elspeth down tick. Failure. Ah, so then what? Anointed Peacekeeper to make it more expensive for them to harvest her. Or Diviner of Fates for card advantage. And a little bit of life gain. I do like the idea of a little bit of life gain. Anointed Peacekeeper also gives us some um, information. I think we go with Diviner. Mm, the lands are not helpful. Okay. Don't really want an Angel of Unity right now. Do I attack with the Shieldred? So if I attack with the Shieldred, what happens is they can Blood Tithe Harvester, the Diviner of Fates, and then kill Elspeth with Reflection. Wait, why did I think they could kill Shieldred next turn? They don't have enough blood tokens for that. I missed something here. I think I'm still supposed to attack. This still lets them kill Elspeth this turn, but... I think... The fact that I have another Elspeth in hand to give this Shieldred flying means that I'm supposed to make them try to kill the Shieldred this turn, I think. Yes, another Blood Tithe Harvester was the exact thing that getting the Anointed Peacekeeper played around. Alright, that's pretty awful. We have the other Elspeth to try to hit Temporary Lockdown to clear out both Blood Tithe Harvesters, potentially. Which leaves me hoping that they don't activate this Blood Tithe Harvester here, but it's probably for the best for them if they do. I appreciate them flooding out. That makes my life a lot easier. No, they kill the Diviner. Okay. Huh. Well, that's really weird. Pono will know what's up. If I choose not to do anything other than uptick Elspeth on nothing, but I think that's still the best plan here. I can play a flash blocker to protect this Elspeth and then get to down tick the Elspeth. And with the chump block plus the kill, 
I can do that even through two attackers. Fable, sure. They got to copy the token. No, they copied Blood Tithe Harvester. Okay, that's easier for me to answer. So we remove the Blood Death Harvester, they get to draw a card. But that means we keep Urtai in play. And we still have the ability to down tick Elspeth if needs be. More Harvesters. Jeez. Alright, Elspeth, what you got for me? Temporary lockdown feels pretty good right now. What about other Elspeth? What do you have? You probably should down tick, or dare I up tick? Give Urtai Flying Force a removal spell. Think going for it's a little better. Representing lethal with one creature in play, with a second creature via Elspeth flying. If they invoke despair, that's fine. This is kind of like invoke despair. That's fine, I can give them Omi Colt. That alone doesn't change anything. Invoke Despair still wouldn't be a problem because they would be out of mana and couldn't copy anything with Kikijiki if they play land invoke. Sanguine Brushstroke, copy Blood Artist with Kiki, gain two... No, the, I still give Clement flying, so that's not good enough. Voltage Surge, Clement, sack Blood Token to Oni Colt Anvil, go to five? No, then I uptick on Urtai and do five damage. Okay. This looks tough, opponent. Voltage Surge, Urtai, don't copy anything. Keeps them alive. Sacking the blood token to Voltage Surge. I don't know why I thought they had to Voltage Surge Clement when they have an artifact they can sack now. This shouldn't be able to get them there, though. I think they needed Voltage Surge killing Urtai. To six. Ooh. 
we give flying. I will play around the potential to mess anything up. We will keep the shieldred. We will swing for lethal. Okay. <sighs> Gosh. I'm happy with this deck's matchup against Oni Colt Anvil, but that doesn't mean that it isn't still horrifying every second of the way. Four and one. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Ugh. What do we got here? On the draw. Turn two, underdog, turn three, or fiend. Not the best, but I can't mulligan good mana. And on curve. Unsure if I want to play this Takanuma on turn one or not. Definitely don't want to play the Caves, because I'd like to take no damage playing Underdog into Rafine. Could technically play Plaza of Heroes turn one. If I draw a Swamp, which I think is my only untapped Painless Black source at this point, would I rather play the Swamp than the Takanuma with Lazel in hand? I don't think so, so I think we just play the Takanuma. Don't need to give my opponent more information, not that it matters in all likelihood. Uh, playing against Esper on the draw. A little concerning. Cut down for underdog, sure. If they... Kill or counter this Rafine, my Diviner of Fates is probably not getting played, which is kind of a concern. Uh, hopefully not a second cut down, hopefully just an Infernal Grasp, so that at least their mana is more taxed here. Nope, second cut down. Yikes. Alright, well, I can still discard this Diviner of Fates to Lazel at least. Would like my opponent to not have Lazel. To various lows the sun sets. Not fantastic for me, but could be significantly worse. Alright, Lazel. Get in there. They chose to uptick to fairy. Like, representing a third cutdown? Huh. My hope at this point <clears throat> is that they either play something that I can Sigardian Evangel tap down to kill Teferi, or that they try to use removal spells for Lazel on my turn. Once I get to blow out with Valorous Dance. Oh, wow, we're playing against real deal control. Huh. All right. Well, Valorous Dance should be pretty good against this, in the sense that I am should be able to kill Teferi here.
Yeah, they acknowledge that I can probably kill Teferi here. We draw the land, which gives us some interesting options. Teferi's killable basically no matter what. I could try to go really wide by playing two Sigardian Evangels and also discarding a Savan the final Sigardian Evangel to Lazel. I could play Elspeth and Downtick just to have Elspeth on board. Oh, they could have Fragment Reality on the Lazel here. That would kind of suck. But that also means that I would want to minus Lazel post-combat. Okay, they do not have that. I believe I want to develop my board while they are tapped out in a way that is more resilient to farewell. Guess we're going to get Rafine then, because <laughs> I don't really want any of those other six lands. March, huh? Okay. So they could have farewelled that turn, but chose to kill the Elspeth instead. Kind of feel like I want to just make a giant Lazel. Let's see, how am I doing this? I want to get back Diviner of Fate. Oh, I don't have a Diviner of Fate in my graveyard. I have a Rafine in my graveyard. Uh, so then I don't really have an incentive at all to discard Diviner of Fates to make Lazel reanimate. I would rather play Diviner of Fates, probably. Maybe not. Maybe I'd rather play the Underdog. Yeah, I'd much rather play the Underdog, because then I get counters on Lazel. Although they might have a cut down here. Could Valorous stance that? Yowzers. <sighs> I'm probably supposed to get rid of Valorous stance here, right? Or am I too concerned that the opponent could possibly have Shuldred? So Guardian of Angel goes wide, which I would kind of appreciate next turn in all likelihood. I think I play it safe, keep the Valorous stance. Now that I've gotten a second Diviner of Fates, do I discard the first one to the Lazel? Do you get to draw a card off of it? Probably. I don't think holding up the Valorous Stance matters much, because if they have something here that's relevant then the thing that is going to be relevant is a farewell. Hmm. 
Yep. I don't play around that as much as I thought I could. Time to find out if it's enough. to make Diviner of Fates more threatening, if possible. I don't think I should feel like Valorous Stance has a lot of targets against a Farewell deck, but... Anything else that I would tutor with Diviner of Fates would be worse, but I would thin them out of my deck. Rafine's Tower being an option to discard to Clement's pretty interesting here. But I want to do that next turn, not this turn. I guess I just accept Diviner of Fates not getting bigger. Hope we draw an untapped land so that I can hold up Valorous Stance. I could specialize Clement this turn, but then I wouldn't trigger Diviner of Fates. That's probably still worth it, actually. But then again... I, holding up Valorous Stance to make cut down not removal spells for Diviner of Fates is probably a good thing. Alright, Peacekeeper, give me information. Wandering Emperor played before Peacekeeper. Wandering Emperor, but played after Peacekeeper. That's a pretty big mistake. If they had spent four mana to play the Wandering Emperor in response here, they still would have had the mana to activate Wandering Emperor this turn. But this way around, they can't spend six plus two to activate it. That said, they will be able to kill Diviner of Fates on their turn if I swing. So I'm probably just not supposed to swing. Oh wait, is blue wrong? Should I be going, should I specialize Clement into black? Swing for six, have two two twos. I don't think so. I think I want cards here given their hand. Yeah, so I think I don't swing with Diviner of Fates at all. Ooh. All right, well, we're going to keep Anointed Peacekeeper. And then I guess we're going to play... Actually, if they don't play Wandering Emperor now, I get to name Wandering Emperor again, and if they do play Wandering Emperor now, then I get to swing at Wandering Emperor? Okay. So double up on the Wandering Emperor means I actually get to swing with Diviner of Fates and represent Lethal next turn now, because now they just can't play Wandering Emperor even at the end of turn. So they have to do some cycling and getting creatures with Bind to Secrecy instead. I should have held up the Valorous Stance. Wasn't expecting... The other kind of board wipe. Was hoping that wouldn't happen. We are flooding out way too hard. Alright, so what I need is a Shieldred? Okay. 
Would have preferred that this turn, but... <sighs> the worst case scenarios don't stop coming. Sad thing is, if I hadn't played the second uh, Anointed Peacekeeper and held a Valorous stance, I'd probably still be winning this. Yeah, that's pretty terrible for me. The good news is this should be an incredibly well-positioned matchup post-board. Is this three or four? Three. Okay. Oh, no, they have the negate for Valorous Stance, too. Which they see. All right. If they decide to counter this, then we concede. I have the plaza to stop it from dying to the Void Ren, but they're just going to exile it with the Wandering Emperor by tapping it down with Teferi on their turn. All right. So we don't want cut down. I guess we don't hate Fateful Absence. Don't really want Elspeth. We want Stroke, Secrecy, Urtai, Thalia. Given the number of board wipes the opponent's playing, I don't think they're likely to be playing Shieldred. So I think I'm actually okay cutting Valorous Stance. Valorous Stance being protection from removal spells versus Fateful Absence being removal for Planeswalkers is kind of a weird... ...setup. Hmm. I need two more cuts, and I have no idea. They did not look like a deck that was playing Tasha. Or, judging by the number of board wipes, playing... Uh, Kaelin? And in that case, we don't actually need Viconia. What am I supposed to cut here? Sigardine Evangel against the deck that goes this wide, maybe? Take the play. Boy. Okay, I think I gotta keep this. I don't think I gotta be excited, but Thalia is not bad. Faithful Absence is kind of bad, though. All right, opponent, do you have cut down for Thalia? Yes. Troublesome. Uh, 
Oh, they are. Wow, they are playing Galen. Huh. That's kind of weird. Maybe that's... No? Huh. That feels weird. Maybe I'm overestimating the number of board wipes that they actually have in their deck. Uh, okay. I want Tanisha's underdog in the graveyard. Probably. I'm gonna just play Diviner of Fates here. Diviner of Fates discard Fateful Absence. Still not expecting Shieldred. Try to find a counter spell. We do. That's good. Okay. Combat. We'll put the counters on our fiend because they shouldn't be able to kill it with this amount of mana. Cut down on Diviner if Fates is sad. Now... Where would I prefer to put these counters? Probably still on our fiend so that Kalim costs the maximum amount of mana to use? Do I want to keep Rafine in case this Rafine dies? I'm already in trouble if this Rafine dies anyway. Angel of Unities are pretty mediocre, though. In fact, maybe Thalia is better than the Angel of Unity in case they do board wipe me at some point. If they get to the point where they're board wiping me through Thalia, then they can board wipe me through the second Thalia in all likelihood. Although maybe... I don't know. Now, what am I scared of for five mana? Should I hold up the Disdainful Stroke or just play Diviner? There absolutely are four mana board wipes in the format. But we're not representing lethal right now. Well, I mean, I, I am representing lethal with Tenacious Underdog, I guess. They can't Wandering Emperor my Rafine. I think I'm supposed to commit the Diviner of Fates here. Path of Peril isn't scary. Specifically, what I'm afraid of is the four mana destroy all creatures multicolored thing. Tasha, I'm not scared of, but we're bringing the Myconia back in because apparently I completely misread them. Right, okay, so I can do five, six, plus Rafine triggers. Attacking with Thalia doesn't accomplish anything. We're doing eight damage. Do I want to mess with the Thalia at all? Or mess with Atasha at all? I don't believe so. We're going to put counters on Diviner of Fates so that it can attack through a Thalia uptick next turn. And then I'm probably just going to hold up to Stainful Stroke and do nothing else. All right, opponent at three, pass the turn. We have Disdainful Stroke, we have Tenacious Underdog, who is not lethal through Tasha up to. But they gotta answer a lot of stuff here through Athalia. Six mana. Did 
Tenacious Underdog does represent lethal if her fiend is in play. No. All right. Good stuff. And now on the draw. We definitely bring in Viconia. What do we cut? So Guardian of Angel looks even less impressive with the opponent actually having Tasha. So much less impressive that I'd be willing to play for XE Missionary? I don't think so. I think that I am aggressive, not value. the draw. If we hit an untapped land, we get turn two Thalia. The reward isn't very high, but I'm playing against control. Every piece of cardboard that I can get is important. It also has the Viconia, which is a big deal. But I need to hit two lands out of the next three draws. And I want both of them untapped. Am I willing to take that risk? What do I think my odds are on six? I think, generally speaking, I'm not a deck that wins on card advantage anyway. I'm a deck that wins on tempo to the board into disruption. But I guess I'm going to be given the same choice again. I, I'll keep on six. All right, that's something. Do we lead with Thalion two or Clement? Hmm. Probably Clement, because there's a good chance they have a removal spell here. Specifically, Cut Down being the most likely that kills Thalia anyway. So I might as well buff everything first. No removal spell. Okay, it's horrifying. It's horrifying too. Draw, untap land, play Peacekeeper? No, draw a Peacekeeper though. Uh, this would be so much easier if I hit that land draw. Cut down for the Clement. No? Okay. Draw on tap land, play Peacekeeper. <sighs> well, we're in trouble. In all likelihood, my best move might be to make... Specializing Clement into black is a little too weak against single target removal, I think. I 
think I'm just going to play Angel of Unity, which sucks. Uh, this is looking a lot like a board wipe, and my anointed peacekeepers are rapidly becoming weaker every turn. Oh, okay, Urtai's not a board wipe. I can kind of live with that. Presumably kills Thalia. Alright, draw a card, not a land. Alright, that's something. So do we were fiend? I can't kill Teferi this turn no matter what I do. Kind of think I'm supposed to play Peacekeeper over Rafine. Hope they don't counter it. So they have Kaelin to tap down. Uh, they've just got everything they could need. So they get to farewell to wipe the board next turn, which means the Teferi lives no matter what. Although if I name Teferi, I suppose they could just void rend the anointed peacekeeper, couldn't they? But then I force them to use two cards to wipe the board. think that's for the best. They don't kale him. Interesting. They void run the angel? Yeah, I mean, they've got Kalen for Peacekeeper, that's true. them from ultimating the Teferi. Do I still have Fateful Absence in the deck? I have Urtai, 
and one fateful absence. So we have three draws. Plus a scry. Oh, Lazel, so often you'd be really good. But I just have to find an answer to Teferi. Currently, they're just on board. They can uptick Teferi, downtick Wandering Emperor, Kalim to tap down Peacekeeper, and then be set up to Ultimate Teferi, and I can't stop that. Okay. Removal spell gone. Drawn to an answer for Teferi. No, because they've got the Kalim. Okay, so we just have to beat a Teferi ultimate. Not really having anything work out for us, huh? Oh dear. Still not a land, so I could actually specialize this laser and do something, huh? know how we out attrition the opponent who has a board wipe and drawing twice as many cards as me and is at 30 life it's a little tricky Flying threat. need my opponent to draw a lot of lands. 
Oh, dear. I'm kind of... I'm, I'm actually a little salty that my opponent boarded in the gate against me. And I still can't win. Ugh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I got so much nothing here. That's the game. I probably ought to concede at this point. Oh, hey, cool, a land. All right, well, our plan now is about 30 turns of the opponent being unable to answer a shieldred. I'm sure that's super likely. Mind you, I think we might be dead this turn. They need one copy of Kalem to pour any removal spell to kill me? No, okay. Well, that's magic. Feels kind of sad to go out to terrible opening hands, but... And it's bound to catch you eventually. Four and two, not the worst. We lost to Rakdos once, which... Yeah, I think that matchup is good, but it's not like it's 100%, so considering we played against, well... On camera, I think we played against it like three or four times. Off camera, I played against it uh, three more times yesterday. So I think that makes me like six and one against it, which, yeah, all right, that's respectable. You can pick up a loss against it somewhere. Matchup overall felt pretty favored. Matchup against Esper Control Decks still, I think, doesn't feel great game one. And feels good post-board when you're on the play, but it's rough when you're on the draw. And... Being super on the draw by not having lands makes it even more rougher. -er. But, uh... So the cookie crumbles. Oh, nice profit of gems, though. Over the whole weekend. <laughs>